Justin, welcome to Validated. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. So this is our second episode talking about the intersection of Bitcoin and the Solana universe. So, you know, last time on the show, we, we talked to Threshold and Thesis about TBTC, which is sort of a, a bridge liquidity layer um, that brings wrapped Bitcoin to Ethereum and then brings that asset to Solana. But what you guys are doing at Zeus is a little bit different. You guys talk about this as the first communication layer between Bitcoin and Solana. What does that actually mean? This is the type of question that I often get asked uh, from from people I found in a conference. Like, what is Zeus? Like, is Zeus layer two? Or is, is, is Zeus layer two like for SVNs? You know, answer is no entirely. You know, uh, me as a founder, I, I I'm a strongly uh, disagree with uh, fragmentation on, on the layer one perspective. First, first in terms of usability for the user size, why would you want to change RPC to another new layer? But if a layer one a Solana is far more usable than, than, than most of the layers already. And second, but the most importantly, it's a uh, uh, liquidity fragmentations. You know, we we have experienced that for the last two years from Ethereum perspective, from EVNs. You know, there too is not for it's not the solutions. There there could be a temporary solution, but for for the long term sustainable solution wise, uh, I don't think users really appreciate that. And uh, and and then we have, we start seeing the reason why Anatoly and Raj for uh, from two years ago saying that one layer should transact everything instead of like multiple layers on top of it. So. You know, uh, what Zeus does, uh, we, we we portray ourselves as a layer 1.5. Hmm. Solana is a layer 1 plus 0 0.5 Zeus, which would enable external assets like uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, any UTXO chains that are, are not programmable. We make it programmable on Solana using SVNs on the layer 1 perspective. Yeah, so let's get into a little bit of how that actually works. I think, I think famously, Bitcoin and, and these other types of assets you mentioned they don't really have a smart contract system. There, there's some taproot magic and there's maybe some bit VM sometime in the future. But, you know, if you look at all of the existing L2s today, like the Bitcoin L2s today, they're really side chains with some sort of trust minimized bridging. Um, very similar to, you know, how Polygon proof of stake has no direct security relationship to Ethereum. It, it is a, a side chain at that point versus something like an optimism, which is actually built properly on top of the Ethereum stack. So walk me through a little bit how, like, you, you call this a layer 1.5. Uh, how does it differ from a classic, like, sidechain implementation? Yeah, for sure. You know, first of all, I just want to emphasize on the Bitcoin layer 2 uh, aspect right now. You know, we, we probably see more than 30, 50 plus Bitcoin layer 2 so-called uh, coming out this year or, or last, around the end of last year at uh, that time. And a lot of, like Austin said, obviously, a lot of these layers are not correlated with Bitcoin uh, on, on, the, on the layer one consensus. Yeah. More so, they're more like a side chain perspective with, with, with their own POS mechanisms, enabling their own security rather than working inter, uh, interchangeably with a uh, Bitcoin POW consensus. Yeah. So that to me, they are just creating a layer. And then, which is something called BVN. You are pretty much taking EVM perspective into their own layer, changing gas from Ethereum to Bitcoins. Is that helpful? I'm not sure because, you know, every cycle, users, investors, obviously retails are changing their appetites and they know what is good, what is good for the future of Web3s. So, and then that's why, here's the reason why I started Zeus almost 14 months ago. I, I went, I was in Europe. I went to a couple of Bitcoin conferences and I was just like, like diving into all these technical, technical paper on a, on a Bitcoin layer too. I realized that, hey, they're just creating their own layers. Yeah. And why don't we just mix a lot of as a layer two for these their POW consensus, UT, UTXO chains out there. And I, we have to know that, right? Like a lot of these miners, they're looking for sustainable yield. They're yeah. not looking for crazy incentives like 10, 20% yield. Yeah, sure. I mean, it could be appealing for, 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 the fir for the first few days, but where does the yield come from, right? We have to know yield comes from users. If, yeah. if, if a protocol and an ecosystem has no dApps and uh, users, the yields are uh, inflationary in, the, in, in, in most of the aspects are, are coming from their own native tokens. So, yeah. you know, I, I still think that's a lot of we're providing the most sustainable yield right now. If you look at in, ter in, in terms of on-chain activities and on-chain growth rates. And here's the reason why, you know, um, a lot of people ask me if Zeus is not there too, you guys are there at one point, but how does that work? Which, which means Zeus... All these assets are communicated over to Solana uh, by Zeus, are safely guarded by Zeus Node. And Zeus Node is a consensus. It's a consensus of NPC models. 
running on top of Solana validators, which means we don't run our own validator. We have our own nodes and the nodes empower our own consensus, which is an NPC models. Uh, every asset that I are deposited in, into the external blockchain address are safely guarded by the node itself, which means even Zeus Foundation ourselves have, have no right to really take the assets, whatever you po deposit and mix on the Solana side of it. So uh, I, I think it's refreshing in many aspects that Zeus also get asked a lot, are you guys a bridge? You know, uh, first, of, first of all, like, you know, uh, without a bridge, you know, um, we are far more uh, interoperable, composable in a way that people can build on top of ZPL and then creating ZPL assets. And then ZPL assets is actually derived by token extensions. So we're, we're extremely confident that with ZPL assets, especially like external assets like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Room, order nodes, it's really going to do the strong showcases of what token extension can do for the Solana, entire Solana ecosystem. And then obviously with the revenue models of uh, Zeus uh, ZPL assets, which is uh, token extension models, the more transaction that is being on chain, the more revenue we earn in Sol, and the more we kick it back to Zeus node itself too. So right now there are, there are really six things that want to build on top of ZPL. They want to build like a multi-chain launchpad. You know, uh, I'm not sure a lot of you guys have experienced Using Ordinal, you need Sats wallet to purchase Ordinal and Sats. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. And not just that, right? You're pretty pretty much paying uh, inscriptions, uh, uh, tokens on a, on a Bitcoin block that has no utilities, that has no programmable actions. You can even do governance on top of it. But why can we migrate these to Solana? I think that could be interesting moving forward. Yeah. So I, I want to kind of go back to like that, the technical layer of how Zeus actually operates. So you mentioned there's kind of this node coordination network that's running on top of, of Solana. Um, but if I'm taking something like Bitcoin, right, walk me through, like, what is the journey of me taking, from a technical perspective, me taking a Bitcoin that's on the Bitcoin network and generating something I can use in Solana DeFi via Zeus? So Apollo is a first step building on top of ZPL. So pretty much Apollo and the mission of Apollo is onboarding millions of Bitcoins through Solana. And what it does, Apollo leverage the communication portal between Bitcoin and Solana using Solana to validate whatever happens on the Bitcoin ends. Mm -hmm. So, which means that the, the, to walk through, you, de you simply deposit uh, your Bitcoins into the address that is being provided by Apollo, and it will provide you another version of uh, a ZPU asset, which is called ZBDC on Solana end. And your BDC is simply guarded by Zeus. No one has a right to take whatever the BDC is depositing to the in the address, and then. You can use ZBDC deposit into this, for example, like uh, Caminos or, right. or any structured products or bar lendings. I think these are the type of DeFi action that uh, uh, Bitcoin institutions are looking for. You know, even just one percent of yield sustainably, sure. that is huge for miners. So, so where uh, you know the, the classic problem with every time you're trying to move a Bitcoin off of the Bitcoin network is someone or something has to custody it. And because there's no smart contract programming language on Bitcoin, you can't do what you typically do on a on a, a network like Solana or Ethereum, where you know you wrap it in a smart contract program that is open source and audited and you know like battle tested from that perspective. So, so what does the actual like custody look like on this case? Are, are you basically taking that Bitcoin seed phrase for that address and like breaking it up and MPCing it throughout the nodes, or how is the actual Bitcoin secured? So basically, um, we use tab routes. So you deposit it into the tab or address uh, for your Bitcoins, and then send it notes to our, our Zeus nodes. And then each of the Zeus nodes, which is six Zeus nodes, will divide their private keys and then use NPC to mix up the private keys. So no one knows on chains which nodes are actually holding the key to transact. And then all, pretty much all, the, all of these six nodes have to be operated at, at the same time to really ensure the transaction from the tab or address are being validated on SVN levels. So in, in, in the short term, for non-technical people, we're using Solana to validate whatever happens on the Bitcoin side. And once Solana validated on our end by Zeus nodes, and then we release the token, which is called ZBDC on the Solana end, and you have that ZPO asset on your wallet. Nice. And so if I want to go the other way, if I've bought ZBTC on Solana and I say, ah, but I want to deposit it into my Bitcoin address, how does that like redemption flow work? So once you get ZBDC, you can also withdraw from uh, Apollo's. So pretty much 
the amount of CBDC will, will now inflate unless there are more BDC deposit into. Totally. And if there is strong demand of ZBDC, there's going to be kinship premiums in some perspective. Mm-hmm. If the Solana CBDC on the Solana side is higher price than actually BDC, there's going to be arbitrage opportunities. And I believe that more people will actually want to deposit BDC into CBDC and sell on Solana. And once you hit that like, equilibrium levels, the price will adjust it to a market level as well. And obviously, like, there's no work on Bitcoins. And uh, I think with, with this way, if more demands will cause more supply. And, and eventually, if you meet the equilibrium levels for the price itself. Yeah, totally. So, but if I want to like, uh, like unwrap for lack of a better term, um, and get yeah. like, you know, I, I've like, so for example, like with, with thesis or threshold, the redemption arc is on Solana, you have to bridge it to Ethereum, and then you can talk to the thesis network and you can get BTC back on the other end. How does that work, uh, with Zeus or, you know, it maybe for Litecoin completely in the future. Different. Yeah. 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 Like it, honestly, just withdraw your ZBDC to BTC address. Yeah, you know, okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna ask you to provide your BDC address, and uh, you, uh, within within twelve hours, you're gonna get your BDCs on theirs. So it's, is that like a human we still in have, the loop, or how is that kind of managed for that redemption? Um, it's not it's on a program levels because we have like co reserve, hot reserve, uh, on the balance sheets. So yep. we want to ensure that nobody, ev- not not everyone is gonna reserve and then does malicious attack at a one time. So there's gonna be co reserves. For example, sixty percent of uh, BDCs is gonna be hot wallets. Forty percent is gonna be on cold wallets as well. And everything is done by on, on, on a program side as well. Yeah. So, so like, uh, walk me through kind of how that coordination works. So, so you mentioned that like you guys are using Taproot addresses, and so the, the Zeus nodes are, are are controlling the MPC. How do they reassemble the key to then like withdraw Bitcoin from that Taproot address? Like when someone requests, you know, let's say there's like you know a thousand Bitcoin in this particular address, and you know I I have want to get one out or something like that. So, um, when you get extra Bitcoins, ZBDC on a Solana side, somebody's losing it. Yeah. Like, that, that's how it works. And when you want to withdraw in, in, through Apollos, which is the first uh, that building on top of ZPL, you're going to have to provide your Bitcoin address. And then once Solana, it's pretty much like a lock and main mechanism. So, you release your ZBDC, and then one of the address for the co reserves is going to release to a hot address. And then you're going to get your uh, your bitcoins on a, on a provided address, and this this way has no censorships. There is no third party. Everything is done by procedures and the pro- programmable ways, per se. Nice. And, and so, how do you kind of view the future of kind of a Bitcoin Solana communication layer? Like the the first use here is sort of not not exactly bridging, but something similar to to bridging or synthetic asset creation with a one to one backed asset. What are the other applications you see for? communications layers between Solana and networks like Bitcoin? I think Apollo is going to demonstrate the, the potential of having layer 1.5 between Bitcoin and Solana. You know, I mean, Solana can make Bitcoin programmable uh, with SV, the potential of SVNs. And obviously, Apollo is the first uh, restaking of a big BDC question, restaking BDCs from BDC to Solana. And I think the more use cases that we have seen that people want to collateral that Bitcoin issue stable coins on Solana as well. That could be a game changer as well. If DAI could work out with EVNs, why can't we do a stable, decentralized algorithmic uh, stable coins on Solana collect has been collateral by Bitcoins. Could also work very well as well. And more perspective is that there are more than 50 plus thousand of collection of order notes. They are lack of utilities, no yeah. governors, no way to really propel the community moving forward you know, with a lot of consensus and decisions. But with, with Zeus, you can really build a synthetic DAO tokens from Wernal to SPL, uh, ZPO standards, and then people can really use Relance, on Solana, voting, a lot of things, cool thing you can do with that. And then also, by the way, Launchpad as well, right? I think, as a matter of fact, that like, if you want to use Unisats, a lot of Bitcoin wallets to purchase uh, sats or rooms, a lot of all these like encrypted uh, letters, it takes well forever. And the user experience are, uh, ex- are pretty terrible, actually. So. If we can use Solana, deposit your deposit your sell to buy whatever on a Bitcoin ends, that could yep. be interesting models as well. Yeah. So I want to kind of go back to one piece, which is you mentioned this is all built using Solana as a coordination layer. Why did you guys decide to make that decision and, and sort of what was that process like? What else did you evaluate for architecture decisions? Yeah. Um, I think frankly speaking, we we've been building on Solana since twenty late twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty. 
Um, we were probably one of the earliest, uh, one of the earliest Asian uh, developers in Asia that are being advocating Solana since day one. You know, you, you can't always pick a better chance. Obviously, there, there's a reason why we stay in Solana for the last four, almost five years already. It's, is that every year there's always better chain with uh, faster TPS, but the chain that has been constantly going through stress tests, constantly going through battles, and it has the best uh, social economics, social uh, uh, communities. I think that those are the chains that you want to bid on. And and then we have proven that our th- thesis were right from already this year. So, you know, yeah. the on-chain usage for Solana and then daily activ- wallet address, it, it's been phenomenal in one aspect. And why make Solana and Bitcoin together? I think that's a very interesting model. A lot of people ask me, Justin, why do you think about that, of this first place? I think if there has to be one layer that has to be interact with Solana, it has to be Solana. I'm so sorry, with Bitcoin, it has to be Solana. You know, Ethereum had, they had their own chains last cycles. WBDCs, RAM BDC, all these like so-called like communication there, they were trying to do a similar what Solana does. They couldn't pull it off because layer two. Mm. It wasn't because of the design of layer one Ethereum. It was because of competition of layer two due to high cost and low speeds. And if you have, you have two chains that are low speed trying to work with each other, it doesn't make sense in many aspects, mm. right? So I think Solana has proven low cost, high speeds. It's actually buildable and much easier to build compared to before. It's, and not to mention user acquisitions. I think a lot of people think that I, have, I can be the first product in this chain and I, I have the market shares, but it doesn't work that way. Everyone tries to run the Lido playbook. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Why would you want to build on um, anything on top of besides iOS and Androids right, right. now? Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me at all. So for me, Androids, Ethereum, iOS is Solana. If we can make iOS work with Bitcoins, which is on top liquidities, we have a strong edge right over here. And it's, it's not just that, right? Like I mentioned, there are six projects we want to build on top of ZPL. These projects are coming from Bitcoin communities. Right. It's not coming from Solana. They, they had a... They have enough frustrations from so-called Bitcoin layer two, too much promising. Hmm. And then people don't realize that it's actually not that easy to build a layer. Yeah, I mean, this is speed. this is one of the things people always overestimate or underestimate. They they think, oh, we'll just build a management layer on top of this thing. And like, you know, other than base, very few have actually managed to build a strong, compelling one, which I think is very, very interesting. Like the 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 problems of building a system that's dependent on another system um, are pretty massive. Um, not to say it can't be done, but it's just uh, it's a hard process to get right. I agree. I, I mean, like, there's always better chains out there every year. Obviously, it's going to come out like faster TPS, faster this, yeah. secure that. But who's actually using that? Like, people actually use it? <laughs> So uh, I want to I take a little bit of a, a turn here. Um, you guys have a kind of interesting model, and correct me if I'm understanding this right or wrong, but of uh, like a verifiable program library on on Zeus. How does that work, and, and what's the sort of, uh, what's the reason for needing like a program registry there? Basically, what we, what, how we differentiate us with a lot of so-called question layers out there is that First of all, we we are not layers with layer 1.5. So yeah. we pretty much opens another doors for Solana to really interact with external blockchains interchangeably and permissionless ways to do that. Second, but most importantly, we want to advocate future developers and founders to build the next generation of question products. And I, I'm still a believer the future should be monolithic in a way that future should be multi-chain questions in many aspects. If SVN is really propelling the cycles and, and really helping a lot of users and founders to build next generation of Web3 web apps, why can we enable this to external blockchains? You know, a lot of these UTXO chains out there, they are on top liquidity, in my opinion. They're sitting at around 10 billion to 50 billion, 100 billion, like so long, Bitcoin liquidity out there. They're waiting for us to really develop the next generation of the devs to really propel moving forward. So um, I just spoke to Litecoin miners three days ago, actually. They're very excited. They're yeah. very excited. First of all, they can be programmable at first ever. I mean, there were chains out there that wanted to try it. I also spoke to miner, one of the big, biggest miners for Dogecoin as well. They want to make that happen as well. Why can Dogecoin work with Solana? It could be a lot of interesting model moving forward as well, right? So Yeah. So do you sort of see a lot of these networks then as 
Because Doge, there, there have been proposals floating around for Doge to migrate to proof of stake for a long time. And in that migration, there's always kind of been an assumed, oh, well, we could easily add some form of light compute layer on top of on that as well. D do you sort of see that as like maybe not gaining as much traction and instead they're looking at, oh, what if we could just bring the Doge asset class to other other networks? Yeah, um, great question, first of all. Um, I mean, I, I think, I'm pretty sure Ethereum Foundation spent probably half billion dollars on, on from migrating like, PoW to POS, <laughs> at least, yeah. for all, all, all these last four years. And in terms of Doge, if you go to, go, go to the GitHub to see their commitments, it's not even close to Ethereum, obviously. And, yeah. you know, if if that doesn't work, why can't we still want to help? And then, frankly, I spoke to two Doge coin miners. They're very optimistic about these kind of collaborations, right? They're, they're, they have so much Doge sitting there, mostly in, in, into institutions' wallets, collateral, getting more stable coins, or just sitting in, in F2 pools, lending their Doge for whatever people want to borrow against you. So, you know, if there are innovations between Doge and the actual Dogecoin that could be potentially earning you on Solana, or if multiple crushing dApps, or even Caminos, even earning yields from drifts, right? Yeah. Traded Dogecoins, native Dogecoin on, on Solana. That could be interesting as well. Yeah. So, so what do you kind of see as like the relevancy for these proof of work assets over over the long term? Like, I think the the Bitcoin pitch is fairly. Uh, well established at this point, you know, oh, like the most secure form of digital asset you can get is Bitcoin, right? There, there, there's a whole narrative around that structure. But I think if you start looking at like the other proof of work assets, like that thesis, you know, gets a little bit shakier because, you know, th there's only one gold, right? And maybe there's two golds now, there's Bitcoin as well. But like, People don't have that same sort of like fervor for silver or platinum or any of the other rare metals. There's something that's like really captured people's minds about about gold. So, you know, Doge obviously has this like very big meme coin status, but like Litecoin as well. Like, where do you see kind of demand for these assets being programmable come in? Like, what is the sort of, um, I, I mean, I, I'm not really asking you to justify their existence, but like, you know, why are these asset classes still desirable in a proof of stake world? Yeah. Um, obviously, POW came first, then POS, and then yeah. migration of POS, POW from POS for Ethereum is obviously due to scalability and the speed of chain itself. Does miner really want that happens? You know, I spoke to a lot of OG miners for Ethereum. A lot of them you know, have moved to AGI marketplace, which is AI competing powers. Interesting. But, you know, I think a lot of it are due to speed of the chain so and then the need for this to chain over else. And then yeah. am I a fan of POW? I'm actually a fan of POW. I think it's probably the most decentralized consensus out there that could be fairly distributed. Two people could could really mine the coins with their own laptop and computers for the early days. And then if you have to purchase mine, mining machines right now, it's probably could cost you like a fortune right now for a lot of our retails. But back in the days, it was fairly distributed. So do I think POW is going to dry down or go away faded? I don't think so. I actually seen a couple of POW chains out there are emerging right now uh, with a lot of uh, um, um, speeds, improvements, or programmable actions, Casper, so-called a lot of POW chains, even Filecoins are from the early days as well. So um, yeah, like, you know, it, it's probably one of the best way to do fairly distribute it, uh, not just from a coin perspective, but for also from a network perspective as well. And yeah, like there, there's 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 always gonna be battle between POW and POS without questions, like in, in my in my takes. And then obviously it's it's it's, it's probably coming from the people that with, with with their own intentions and and, and benefits. So, um, but it's good for industry, right? There's always debates, there's always discussions. Definitely. So uh, you mentioned Apollo is the first uh, application that's been built on top of Zeus. Uh, is there anything else you can tell us about what's what's getting built now? And also for developers who are maybe interested in learning more and digging into the code and figuring out what they could build on the network, uh, where can they go to get started? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we are we are going through Muses testnet right now. Uh, it's the last test step before we actually enable Zeus now opening on, on the mainnet beta. We are we're we are targeting mainnet beta hopefully around breakpoint time. 
So we can release a run on a run breakpoint for a minute beta and then people can really leverage and stake their, their tokens and run, delegate into the nodes and uh, together protect the Zeus network together. And, and when that happens, the Bitcoin can really come into a lot in the preparation matter through Apollo's. And Apollo is the first steps. And we also yep. want to do Apollo token with points. It could be no VC back. And the, actually, the token that has thousands of Bitcoins behind behind uh, the debt itself. So a lot of ways we can do it. And then, yeah, and then we also want to host the first ever Zeus Hackathon around a quarter of this year, uh, late this year, with Taipei uh, Hacker House, which is around December. I think Salah is also, is also the biggest sponsor at that time as well. And yeah, and then our goal is to be one of the tracks for next year for Salon Hackathons. I still think that Salon there, YSVN, could be probably be the, the only solution enabling Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, any OT exchange chains out there coming to Solana. And when that happens, we have a strong edge to com compete with, with Ethereum TVL, in my perspective. Very cool. Well, uh, Justin, thank you for joining us today on Validated. Thank you, guys. It's been my pleasure.